What's up guys? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Today is a video I've been needing to make for you guys for a very long time now. So here I have the Evo X, the Mitsubishi Evo, and we're gonna be doing a full cut and buff on this car. So I'll be going through, cleaning the car, buffing it out, and then maybe waxing it, maybe not though. I don't think I wanna wax it yet just because as you guys know, I'll be wrapping half the car pretty soon here. You cannot wrap over wax. So I don't think I'm gonna wax it quite yet. Let me show you some of the products I am using. As always, everything is gonna be linked down in the description box below. So if you guys wanna use any of these same exact products I'm using, go check the links down below and pick some up. So here are all the products I'll be using to detail the car today. I have my two buffers here, or that's a, that's a high speed buffer uh, that is for using with these two wheels here. This is a variable, variable speed buffer. It's like a dual action buffer. So pretty much when this is on, this wheel will spin and move like this at the same time. That's very good for like sprawl removal and stuff like that. And that is used with these three smaller pads here. I will kind of walk you through what's going on here. So that is a cutting wheel. It's a wool cutting pad, I should say. And I use that with a step one Presta cutting compound. This here is a polishing pad. I use that with step two finishing polish also made by Presta. I use this black pad here with advanced swirl removal, advanced swirl removal made by Pinnacle. This blue pad with advanced finishing polish. And then this yellow pad here is strictly for waxing. And I use that with this very, very good stuff here. It's, it runs a lot of money, but it's well worth it, I think. It's a Pinnacle Severian wax. That stuff is, I think it runs about $100 or $120 for this but I've used this like six, seven times and I still have a ton left. So at the end of the day, it's actually not expensive. It's maybe five, $10 a car and it's a uh, very good stuff. So what I'm gonna do guys, I start off with obviously that pad there with that compound, that pad there with that compound. And being that it's a white car, I do not think I'm gonna have to jump into any swirl removal. This was for the black cars I've owned in my life especially that black STI I used to have. So we'll see how it looks against some light. I'm gonna start with these two and then don't think I'll need those two. And then of course, after it's wrapped, I will jump into the wax. What I'm gonna do right now, guys, this is not 100% needed, but I think it's always easier to pull a few things off the car. So I'm gonna pull these front canards off just so I can buff the bumper like it should be buffed. And then I'm gonna pull this wing off as well. Um, other than that, the car shouldn't need anything else removed. So I'm gonna go ahead and rip those two things off. And then I'm gonna give the car a quick wash. And typically after that, I would clay bar the car, but it was recently clay barred. So I'm not gonna clay bar it this time, it was just done. If you guys have a very disgusting car, I'd recommend clay barring before jumping into the buff section. And I'll show you a few little things on the car that are damaged. There's a lot of black stuff on the rear already. There's some scratches back there I wanna try to get buffed out. And then when that car port took off on me, I don't know if you guys remember that video, that scratched, put that scratch right there. Went on the fender as well. The few little things I wanna get cleaned up on the car. And there's some rock chips on the front I may touch up, we'll see. Let's jump right into it guys. I'm gonna give the car a quick wash and pull these parts off and we can get to buffing. The car is fully cleaned, I got everything pulled off I needed to get pulled off. And now this next step is, it's optional once again, but I always like to do it. So what I do is grab some blue painters tape and I just go around stuff like this right here where there's moldings um, it's just gonna it's gonna make it a lot easier when we go to clean the car after we're done buffing and we don't want the buffing compounds stuck in all these edges especially up here this is always a pain for me to get clean so I'm gonna run tape along all this stuff just mask all that off probably do these head vents as well the, the carbon scoop and some stuff around the headlights the fog lights just go around, spend like 10 minutes. It's gonna save you a lot of time in the future uh, when you go to try to remove buffing compound and suck in all the cracks and crevices on the car. I'll show you guys what that all looks like when it's all done.
All right, let's do a quick run through. So I did all that up there, some stuff on the mirror, that fender vent, all that right there I did with, I need, I need to clean that up a little bit, but all that right there, the vents on the hood, the scoop, headlight, the fog lights, the grill, that seal, headlight, and all same stuff on that side as well. The roof trim, back window, tail lights, grill, and the little inner light things. I don't even know if these are reflectors down here. But now it is time to finally buff out this car. Like I said, guys, you don't have to do all that. And honestly, I spent way longer than I should. I probably spent a good hour masking this thing up, but it'll be worth it in the end. You don't have to do it. You can always just go through and clean it at the end, but it's gonna help a lot when you go to clean it. So the very first thing I'm gonna do is use this pad here on that buffer with this step one compound from Presta. I'm gonna tape a little line on the door. I'm gonna start with this door here. I'm gonna tape a little line down the center of the door. I'll do one side of the door and then I'll peel the tape back up and we can see the difference that this buff is gonna make on this car. It's pretty clean already, but it can be a lot better. I know that for a fact. You always wanna clean your pads before you use them, especially if they're used, or I guess if they're new, it doesn't matter. But So what I have here is a set of pliers and I'm just gonna start spinning the pad and apply the pliers against the, the buffing pad and it'll get all the gunk out of there. Just like that, the pad should be good to go now. So I'm just gonna apply a very small touch of buffing compound to this wheel. You don't need much at all, guys. That'll be enough for half the door. And then you can use a little bit of water. Uh, I'd highly recommend using a little bit of water as well. So I have this squirt bottle right here. I'll throw some more water in and we can use that. A few things to note before I start buffing. The first main thing is you do not want to sit in one area for too long. You're gonna burn through the paint and then you'll have much bigger issues than a few little scratches in your paint and not shiny paint. So I'll show you guys how this is done. I got the little bit of compound on the wheel and I'm just gonna get it on the door, kind of spread it around like this, and then we can get to buffing. This, this buffer here is the variable speed buffer, so it's dial right here, changes how fast it goes. I always just have it on the slowest setting possible. We can mist the door down a little bit. Don't need too much water at all. So that first step was just the cutting compound. It's not gonna be shiny at all right now. That I just used to get a lot of the scratches out. And if I just left it like that, I'd bring it outside, it'd be dull. It'd have a lot of swirl marks in it. So I was used to get scratches out and like any stuff that's stuck on the paint that, that the clay bar would not pull off. So now I'm gonna wipe that down and then we can move on to the polishing compound. Same exact concept here, guys. All right, so let's tape off, wipe it down, and I'll show you guys the difference. This is definitely not a good light for this, but you can see the line right here, guys. There's a bunch of crap on this side of the line, and this side is a lot shinier, so you can clearly see the whole line coming down through here. It looks so freaking good now. So much better. I cannot wait to get this whole car done. But what I usually do to save time, I'll run the whole stage one, like on one side of the car, or maybe even the whole car, just get that stage one done so I'm not constantly switching pads. So I'll do stage one and then I'll go over the whole thing with stage two. And then safe as a black car, I would hit stage three, stage four, and then wax. But being that it's white, I don't think I'm gonna need stage three and four because there should not be swirls. Or you're not gonna be able to see the swirls because, it's, because it is a much lighter color car. Like I said, the main thing you wanna be concerned about or worried about with this polisher or any buffer in general, is you do not wanna sit in one area for a long time. You're gonna burn the paint. And then if you notice the compound getting stuck on the paint, Squirt some water on it and that'll loosen the compound up. You can buff it right off. I'm just gonna set the camera, run a quick little time lapse and I'll show you guys some progress along the way. If you take a look, close look at this bumper, you can see there's black stuff all over it. Uh, same with the trunk. 
it's all up in here i don't know if any of these will come out at all i highly doubt it but i guess we'll give it a shot see what happens if you guys have anything that won't come off the buffer like i am over here so there's this little there's the outline here i'm just grabbing 2000 grit sandpaper and giving it a light sand and it's coming right off and then the the cutting wheel that we're using right now will pull all these scratches out from the sandpaper. Just very, very lightly. Don't do anything more coarse than 2000 grit for something so small like that. I'm gonna do the same thing on these bumper scratches down here. See if I can potentially wet sand some of this out. And I think I'd be better off repainting that bumper, to be honest. That'd be the only way to make that bumper look perfect. All right guys, the full stage one is done. And I don't know if you guys saw, as I was going along, I was kind of wiping down each panel. And then we can move on to stage two, which is polishing the whole car, making it nice and shiny. Stage one, like I said, is just taking out imperfections of the paint. So scratches, stuff that's stuck on there, such as like, I don't know, bugs and whatnot that have been on there forever, uh, road tar, road grime. That's what stage one's all about. Stage two is polishing, making it nice and shiny. Let's get it. One thing I forgot to mention that I probably should let you guys know, it's good to do stuff that's higher up first, like the roof, uh, the hood, so you're not leaning over panels. It's good to do those panels first. Definitely when I go to polish this car, I'm gonna start with the roof and then move on to the sides and the front and back. All right, the car is done being buffed. It's all good to go. Next step is to peel all this masking tape off on the car, bring it outside, or I could just do it in here, um, and wash it. We gotta get all this buffing compound off before it dries. That's one of the major things you gotta do, guys. Before the buff compound dries all the way and gets stuck on your car permanently, you're gonna wanna wash the car like right after you're done buffing it out. And then after that, we can go ahead and get to waxing. Now it is time to go over the whole car and completely wash it. Keep in mind, you're gonna have buffing compound on all the edges and door jams, so make sure you open those doors, get all that cleaned up. Just really go over, go over the whole thing, spend a lot of time, get it cleaned up, get all that buffing compound off there. You're gonna regret it if you do not get it all off. It's gonna be a pain in the ass. So I just spent about a half hour going over the car with a rag and cleaning everything, making it 100% perfect. I'm now gonna take it into the shop and do a wax on it. I know I said I wasn't gonna wax it yet because I'm wrapping half the car, but I do not know when that's gonna happen. I don't know when I'm gonna wrap the car. And I don't want this buff to go to waste. I don't want my paint to start getting faded. So I'm gonna bring it into the shop right now. I'm actually gonna pull it up on jack stands. They're all on jack stands, pull the wheels off so I can clean them and then we can wax the car. Wheels off the car. I got them out back behind the shop right now. I gotta get those things cleaned up. They are super dirty, full of buffing compound. And I'm also gonna be flipping them. So these are the front here. Those are the rear. I'm gonna take the rear, put them on the front, just cause it's all wheel drive and they may be worn a little bit differently. But we are ready for wax, guys. I'm gonna wax the whole car except for the roof because that roof is gonna be going back to black here pretty soon. Like I've mentioned a million times, half of the car is going that camo. So it's gonna be, I'm pretty sure it's gonna be, I think I'm gonna do the driver's side half just cause there's some scratches right here on the bumper. Don't mind the holes, those are for the canards, but scratches on the bumper right there would be covered up by the vinyl. I'm gonna wax the whole car except for the roof. And then tomorrow, probably tomorrow, we can get these wheels cleaned up and I gotta do a few other little things on the car. And then we can get back to putting stuff back on the car. So we're gonna do the wing. We're doing the carbon fiber canards. I have a carbon fiber trunk clip up, up there. We do the roof. Gotta fix that exhaust issue. So I'm just gonna host clamp it. Thanks to one of the subscribers. I gotta fix my taillights. I'll make a video on that because I get so many requests 
on what taillights these are. So I'm gonna make a full video installing the new taillights on the car. Enough talk, let's get to waxing. So here's the setup I will be using for wax. This Pinnacle uh, Silverian Wax, whatever it's called, a yellow pad. This is specifically made for waxing. And then this dual action Porter Cable Buffer. This thing is so nice for, for waxing, for swirl removal, for a lot of stuff. If you're into detailing your cars, pick one of these things up. Link will be down below. Super easy to do. Same concept as buffing. Um, usually to get the wax onto the pad, you have to take the pad off the buffer, but I find it a lot easier to go this route instead of applying it by hand. With waxing, I usually go one panel at a time. That's what they recommend. That's just what I prefer as well. You don't necessarily need to, but I would recommend it. <laughs> As soon as you get one panel done, grab a microfiber, microfiber towel or cloth and get all the wax off. And look at how shiny it is. That it looks incredible. That paint looks so freaking good now. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. I usually am only applying wax to the pad for each body panel once. But being that this trunk is pretty big, and also I did it on the hood, I am doing like the top panel as one wax, and then the, the rear panel as a wax. And then the hood I did in two different parts. And I'm really hoping that, now that there's gonna be a fresh layer of wax on this car, all of the exhaust sut, or whatever it's called, the, the black specs, for those, those of you that run Catalyst, I'm really hoping that's all gonna wash off a lot easier now, because it gets so bad on this car. <laughs> All right, last thing to do is the bumper and we're done. This car is looking absolutely incredible, guys. I am so, so pleased with how it turned out. I've been needing to do that buff and wax for so long now and I'm so glad it's finally done. Now I can move on to other things of the car. So what you can be expecting to see next on the channel, roof wrap, trunk clip install, probably back to the FRS for a while, and then we're gonna be doing the wrap, the turbo install, and a lot of other cool things on the Evo. So if you guys are not subscribed already, hit that subscribe button right up in that corner up there. Really hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or comments, drop them down below. I'll be sure to try to get back to you guys. Like I already said, everything I'm using in this video is gonna be linked in the description box below. So if you wanna use any of these products I'm using, which happen to work very well, go check the description box below and pick some up. All right guys, I'll see you in the next video.